Wow, what a beautiful morning. I had to, to hunt to find some shade now that the sun's come up and burned off the fog. But I just hurt myself. <laughs> I was uh, walking along here filming and I saw that all too familiar little white flicker in the, uh, the thorn trees and I went running across one of these logs like I've been doing all day except for I had some snot on my old rubber boots and both feet kicked up and I landed holding my camera I, I landed saving my camera of course but I landed somehow I landed right on my forearm and uh, my whole my whole rear end down to my foot soaking wet but anyway I landed on my arm and uh, I think it's it's getting better now but there's this I had this hematoma on there like you wouldn't believe it's not bad now but you can definitely see the uh, the bump but now it's just starting to set in oh it hurts anyway I'll be fine not like these ash trees segue uh, in my last video talking at uh, Sean's place about the ash trees and remember how I was so excited to do a little demonstration with the uh, the green ash My goodness. Yeah, yeah. And then we got to peel that fresh green bark off. Yeah. Well, I haven't been able to do that for uh, probably eight or nine years here. The, uh, the emerald ash borer has taken over. And when we were talking about that, there's a lot of questions about why and how. So I just thought I'd do a little video about it because I am so far ahead of Sean. Sean is probably 650, 700 kilometers north of me. So this bug, I guess it originally came from China on a boat or in some stuff, got into the, I guess it'd be northern states and has just been working its way up and just wiping out the ash trees. And it's sad because it's a fantastic wood and there's so much use in, that you can do with it, but it's gone. Like right now, all I have here is uh, firewood. It's not even worth anything right now because of the tens of thousands, probably millions of ash trees that have been cut and uh, made into uh, you know lumber and planking and whatnot just because it's over. So I thought I'd do a little video just showing a little bit of uh, how far ahead we are and what happens to the yeah, ash tree. I'm no, uh, no expert on tree knowledge nor do I pretend to on YouTube but I do know that they're dead. So I can tell you a little bit what I do know is that this emerald ash borer which I've never seen in person but I'll Google a pick right here. Apparently it will uh, get in under the bark, lay its larva, they'll either hatch out or in larva state, they'll eat all the, uh, the, inner, the inner bark out and basically they choke out the tree and kill it. I can peel back the bark here and I can see the, the path that they've gone on and uh, it's kind of cool but it's kind of sad at the same time. The strength of the uh, the ashes it makes for really nice furniture. It's uh, almost like an oak when you uh, when you look at it. Not a good carving wood, but a great wood for furniture and for uh, cutting firewood. I've been burning and cutting the firewood here for. For a decade now and uh, it's one of the highest BTUs that you can get out of a firewood and it splits like a dream so I'll miss that but I still got a few years left here. Well, I hope you like this kind of uh, a video. I just had this uh, really nostalgic feeling up north last week with the at Sean's place there getting to pound the the strips off and showing them how we make baskets because I haven't been able to do that for years here and uh, it's really sad. It's, uh, it's the end of a resource that's been really used for, for centuries and uh, it's gone. So not to be a, a Debbie Downer, since, uh, since the, uh, the ash trees have been uh, disappearing, the maples are filling in and more 
there's more light, different kinds of trees are moving in, and, and that's how life works, it just cycles. You know, when I was a kid playing in this exact bush, running around, I never heard traffic. <laughs> now we got a highway on both sides, so things change, people change, and you just have to accept it and adapt. And uh, all this to say is, when we cover the longhouse, I'm not sure that we're going to have enough ash that's still alive up north that uh, we can cover it properly. We're going to have to make some exceptions to the rules and use maybe a, a different type of uh, covering on the longhouse or, or whatever we come up with. But I really, really just wanted to make this video to show, you know, the Scanadat village is still standing and that I'm not sure if it's maybe 25 years ago or more that they made that uh, longhouse that I showed in my carving video, the uh, what's it called, uh, Life Off the Shelf, that tall longhouse there and it's standing strong but we just can't use it here in this application. I can't bring the, the bark up and use it because it's already half rotten, illegal to carry. So time will tell. But now I'm going to go home and uh, tend to my wound and see what's going on. But don't feel sorry for me. Uh, I only told you about it for uh, comedy relief because I think it's hilarious. So I don't, I don't need the sympathy. The bonehead move and I'll be fine. So I will catch you on the next video. See you guys.